Iconic artwork will be on offer at an upcoming auction. The Madonna and Child of Soweto, also known as the Black Madonna, was painted in 1976 by renowned abstract artist Larry Scully. It references his most famous painting, also titled The Madonna and Child of Soweto, which is installed in the Regina Mundi Catholic Church in Rockville in Soweto. Now, we all know that church so well. Let's find out more um, about this painting and indeed this auction. We're joined via Skype by Dr. Alistair Meredith uh, here in Johannesburg. He's one of the senior art specialists at Strauss & Co., who, of course, will be running this auction. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, uh, Dr. Meredith. Um, uh, the I didn't know this until I started doing some research ahead of my uh, discussion with you. The Madonna and Child of Soweto, there are two versions of it, one done in 1973 and one done in 1976. Give us a little background um, on these pieces uh, and what they reference and which one will be going up for auction. Yes, um, at least two versions that we know of. Um, the original version was painted in 1973. It was commissioned by the Star newspaper. The idea was to put the painting on the front cover of their Christmas edition that year. Um, they also wanted to sell it in order to raise funds uh, for a black education trust at the time. Um, they sold it to Harry Oppenheimer, who then promptly donated it to the church um, in Soweto. This second version was painted probably three years later, uh, in the middle or the later months of 1976. And the second version, which is coming up uh, for auction um, on Tuesday, um, was a direct response to the student riots uh, in mm. June of 1976. And the fact that one of those versions uh, finds itself at the Regina Mundi Church was also uh, um, uh, quite telling because, of course, everybody knows that is the site where during those 1976 uprisings, uh, 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 the school children would run or in the one moment that I know of ran into the church uh, for safety and the, the bullet uh, um, holes um, of that moment, because they were chased by the, the uh, security police at the time. Those bullet holes are still there at the church to this day. How much of that kind of history lends itself to the importance and indeed then the price of a work of art? Well, I mean, you're absolutely right. And, and, and we, we were able to, to take the second version uh, to the church uh, uh, two weeks ago, mm. essentially reuniting the two paintings. Wow. And it's a, a very moving space. Um, and having the two versions together was uh, was very emotional, not, not, mm. on, not only for us, but uh, for the various keepers at the church, too. Mm. Um, you do really get a sense of that being an important historical uh, space. Um, as you mentioned, the roof is still riddled with bullet holes. Um, there are, uh, you know, still artifacts there of um, of, of the violence, particularly from the 1970s and 1980s. Mm. The actual painting speaks to that violence um, also because uh, there is a, a wonderful, bright, central symbol of hope uh, that, Lar that Larry Scully painted. Speak to me about Larry Scully, because obviously the pieces that we're speaking about was almost a narrative of the times that the country was going through uh, and, and indeed what he was observing at that time. Um, how important was the work of Larry Scully um, during that time? Well, I mean, I, I would argue Larry Scully has been enormously underappreciated for, for many years. He, he was mm. a very, very important mid-century painter, as well as an important teacher. Um, he was actually born in Gibraltar, but came to South Africa very, very young, just before the Second World War. Um, he was part of the famous Witz Group. Um, he taught at uh, Pretoria Boys High alongside Walter Battis. Um, he had a, a fantastic solo career in Johannesburg before moving uh, to Stellenbosch, where he, uh, where he ended his career. Um, a very, very important painter, and he was clearly very moved by the violence and the atrocities he witnessed in the 1960s and 1970s. I think for him to paint something so uh, deliberately political uh, mm -hmm. at this time was enormously brave. Um, Rands and Sense, uh, Dr. Meredith, what are we expecting this painting to go for? Well, uh, it, it's estimated at between 70 and 100,000 Rand, uh, which frankly is, is very modest, bearing in mind mm. how important this item is historically. Um, I, I understand we do have a lot of interest, both locally and internationally, so hopefully it, it, it makes considerably more than that. 
it's just such a stunning piece. And just quickly before I let you go, this is obviously part of a much bigger marquee sale that uh, I, I believe also includes uh, a few pirniefs as well. I mean, I'm not an art uh, um, uh, expert at all, but even I know that that name as well. Uh, give us a, a quick idea of what else is going up for sale. Yes, uh, nearly 600 items uh, will be included in, in our upcoming auction. It actually starts this morning at 11 o'clock with a dedicated wine sale, sure. and then it runs through Monday and Tuesday. Um, it, it covers everything from decorative arts to jewelry to silver to furniture and, of course, pictures and sculptures. You mentioned Pierniff. We have an, an absolutely barnstorming cover lot, uh, a, a painting of Bayababs by Pierniff, uh, which we're very excited about. Um, and that's just one of many uh, spectacular pictures coming up uh, for sale. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I always think of movies um, when I think about auctions. It's the kind of thing that you only see in Hollywood movies, as it were. Um, but that sounds just so interesting and fascinating as well. That uh, is Dr. Alistair Meredith, senior, one of the senior art specialists at Strauss & Co. And they're running a huge auction, um, like you heard there, starting this morning with some um, very, very expensive wine.